Today I thought we'd just take a look at how I would go about learning Rails in the current Rails environment. We'll take a look at who's uploading uh, some interesting tutorials. I won't cover everyone because I don't have enough time in the video, which is a good thing because that means there's quite a few people uploading now. Uh, but I thought we'd cover some people that have some interesting things to say, and we'll skip over the people that just upload clickbait nonsense because uh, we don't need that in this video. That said, it gets clicks, so you can't fault the guy for trying, whoever this mysterious man is. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at some of these. The first one I want to talk about, obviously, is Go Rails, uh, Elephant in the Room. Um, I think Chris has pretty much carried the entire community on his back for like nine years now. So uh, yeah, we should probably give some credit there. Um, Chris has covered everything from like polymorphic comments. So if you need like replies for your comments uh, to uh, he's like the uh, deploying with with uh, fly.io, which is a uh, alternative to Heroku. So this is a free hosting solution. So if you're interested in a free hosting solution for a small production application that you're learning with, uh, this is going to be the tutorial for you. And of course, he has done a whole bunch of other stuff, including um, he's created like the PageM, which is used for Stripe integration. If you want to add payments into your Rails app, Chris has made the simple calendar gem, I think it's called. He runs the Go Rails website, which has a whole bunch of tutorial series on here that you can take a look at. Everything including like Action Cable, which is the WebSocket solution. So if you're trying to like make sure that some update goes to a web page without needing to refresh it, this is the series for you. Action Text is for like a blog. If you want to have like the ability to bold your text, that'll be able to handle it or upload files to it with active storage. He's got, here's your, your calendar gem. Uh, and he's got a whole bunch of other very useful tutorials on here, including stuff on Hotwire. And some of them are going to be premium lessons, of course, but some of them are going to be free lessons, and you can just go through and play those videos as you'd like. The other thing Chris has created is the Rails Bytes website. This is great for getting templates for your Rails application. So if you need to set something up, you can usually find it on Rails Bytes. You can even sort by newest here if you'd like to. And uh, in, in some of these cases, some of the stuff's going to be outdated. But in other cases, you can see here, Bootstrap with Rails 5. And you can take a look at the uh, template source before you run it so that you're not installing some random stuff on your machine. Now, this isn't really necessary for learning. But if you don't know it exists, this can save you quite a bit of time in some instances. So I definitely recommend checking out railsbytes.com. Uh, the next channel I want to talk about is WebCrunch. WebCrunch is one I've watched uh, fairly frequently. You can even see some of my progress bars on this channel, even though this isn't the channel I usually watch uh, videos on. But uh, a lot of the WebCrunch tutorials are very in-depth. You can see that here with like a 44 minute, a 20, a 30, a 25 minute. And he goes into a lot of detail in the topics that he decides to cover. Everything including Hotwire again, to passwordless login, to encrypted credentials, which is something that people have asked me to cover, but I don't need to because the tutorial exists right here, and a whole bunch of other uh, very useful tutorials. So I definitely recommend checking out WebCrunch. Of course, I'd recommend checking out every one that I'm going to suggest here, but I'm padding for time by talking about stuff. Next one, of course, is Super Rails. I think I plug Yaroslav's content every chance I get because personally, if I had to choose favorites, and I know parents aren't supposed to choose favorites, I would go with the Super Rails YouTube channel every time because a lot of his content, it, it explains it in a way that appeals to my very small brain. And it's just a, an absolute joy to have someone break things down to such a, a, a useful level. And of course, he's got... I mean, like right here, the device gem covers uh, an hour worth of content. The Hotwire Turbo Autocomplete, which again, you can see I've watched the entire video. And there's just a whole bunch of very useful tutorials here that go far more in depth than I think anyone else does. So I'd highly recommend checking out Super Rails. I'll have a link to all these channels in the video description as well in case you're interested. Next, I want to talk about some of the uh, newer channels that I've been stumbling across. I don't really say like newer as in they've just started, but just channels that I've recently been made aware of. And the first one I want to talk about is Typefast. Now, this is a channel that has a couple series on it. And these series, again, are going to be very in-depth. And in some cases, it like this 67-part Airbnb clone 
it's almost like you're watching someone work through the entire process of creating one of these projects from scratch. So if you're less interested in having a specific topic covered, like the pundit gem for authorization, and more so you just want to see how a project like this can evolve over time. Maybe you want something on your other monitor to just like listen to almost like a podcast. This is definitely a good channel to watch uh, just because you can sort of see how uh, an actual developer deals with some of the problems you'll run into. And you can see that you're not alone in you know running into things that you didn't plan for in part one when you started your project all the way up in like part 48 or something. So this is definitely a good channel to watch and he is currently working on a Trello clone, which I highly recommend checking out uh, because if you're not familiar, Trello is a small Kanban board style project planning application. So you get to see the whole process of making a project planning application from scratch, which of course is an interesting topic if you're into that type of thing, which I am. And it's all built using Ruby on Rails. So again, highly recommend the TypeFast channel. Next channel I want to talk about is the Apps Impact Academy. Now this is another good one that has a whole bunch of useful tutorials. Everything from using uh, like the device current user in like your APIs and device JWT authentication, as well as having a whole bunch of React on Rails tutorials. And then there's some other stuff involving like Rails and Stripe. And you know, there's, there's always a, a, a ton of topics or a ton of videos on these topics. So if you're interested in one of these and it catches your eye, there's probably going to be like 10 or 15 videos on that topic where you can sort of just immerse yourself in whatever you're interested in at the time. Now, if you were a fan of the TypeFast channel's idea of working on a project in real time, then the Sunday Club is the channel for you. This is a excellent channel if you're interested in the longer form content where you just sit down and sort of solve a problem, almost like you're pair programming your way through it. Uh, as you can see here, the entire content of the channel is just live streams and all of the live streams are just, um, I mean, they're just sitting down and working on a problem. It's everything from a refactoring with, with view components to RSpec testing to, uh, you know, UI design. And I mean, it's just a fantastic channel to watch. This is probably one of my favorite channels to just sit down and watch when I'm, uh, you know, working on something because it can keep it on the other monitor and it just feels like someone's working on a project along with me. The next channel I want to talk about is the CJ Avila channel. They have a whole bunch of useful tutorials. Some of them are going to be on Stripe. Some of them are going to be on webhooks, um, even just short ones on enums. These are great if you're not super familiar with how to use enums. And if you're interested, uh, it's this one right here. There's also a very good uh, video on extending rails with engines. And if you pay close attention, you can tell that this one features Chris from Go Rails, who we talked about earlier. So this is going to be another one to uh, sort of keep your eye on because a lot of these are very useful videos. Like right here, we have a usage based metered billing. So this is great if you're trying to create like an API yourself that other people use and you want to charge people to use your API. But there's also other stuff that I haven't talked about like multi-tenant authentication or just multi-tenancy in general. Uh, that's something that I just haven't even thought about in on my channel yet. So that is definitely worth taking a look at. But okay, maybe you're not into video tutorials, which is kind of weird because you're watching a video right now, but maybe you prefer to learn in other ways. In that case, I'd highly suggest checking out the odinproject.com. This is a uh, lovely website that has a whole bunch of Rails uh, lessons on it. And the way that it structures it is it first tells you to learn Ruby, then HTML and CSS, then databases, and then you finally touch on Ruby on Rails. After that, you cover some more HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then there's a small 13 lessons on getting hired. I don't think you're actually going to get hired by the time you're done with the 13 lessons, but it never hurts to keep this in the back of your mind if that's something that you're interested in. Another website, if you're interested in improving your Ruby specifically, or just any programming language, is going to be exorcism.org. Uh, that is E-X-E-R-C-I-S-M. And the, uh, the way this is structured is you have a, a whole bunch of exercises for various uh, programming languages. And if you come in here and you look at how it sort of works, it's almost like you go through a, a couple different blocks in each section, and then those chain through together until eventually you make it all the way down to the bottom. 
So if we just click on one of these, let's go into, I don't know, arrays. You can see sort of how the arrays are structured. You have your overview on the left, and then you're going to have a couple different exercises here. So like the bird count exercise, the way these are structured is it's almost like leak code, but you're going to be able to go through and uh, sort of take a look at the uh, different steps and the different questions for each one. And of course, the entire website's completely free. Uh, I think it might actually be a like nonprofit if I'm not mistaken, but don't quote me on that. So again, excellent exercise here. Now the next two are gonna be a little bit controversial, but there is a Ruby on Rails and a Rails subreddit. Uh, both of them are places where people ask for help and advice, and sometimes people are reasonable on there. I'm personally not the biggest fan of Reddit, but these are available if uh, you're more of a Reddit person, I guess. It's not great that there's two different subreddits, but usually what people end up doing is they post in one and cross post to the other. That's just the burden of having the name Ruby on Rails, I guess. Next up, we have Twitter. Now, this is a decent enough place, but again, you kind of got to curate your content a little bit. In this case, what I'd suggest you doing, if you have it available, is go to the Communities tab and then search for the Ruby on Rails community and then take a look at that one. You're going to see a whole bunch of people only talking about Ruby on Rails. And if you're interested in some of the posts, because you know sometimes you also want to share stuff, one of the best ways that you can prove that you know something is to you know teach it yourself. You might see some of these images, and for these images, I just thought I'd share. The way they're made is by using carbon.now.sh. You can go through and select your programming language of choice, select your uh, editor color of choice, you type in your code, and then you can either export it or just take a screenshot with, like in my case, Windows key, shift, and S, and then you can just snip that out, go over to Twitter, and you can post about whatever you uh, whatever you just wrote your snippet of code on and then say, like, here's how I split an array or something. So that's just a, an extra little tidbit there that I thought I'd share because I, I know this is a question I get asked sometimes. How do people do this? And it's just the carbon tool. I know this was a bit of a strange video, but uh, there's been a lot of comments from people asking me to cover tutorials that these other channels have already covered. And I'm not going to go out and recover what's already out there. So I thought this might be a good way to sort of get people to just go like mingle amongst the other channels. But yeah, hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.